What's going on, gang? Today, we're gonna answer the question, how much should you pay yourself out of your business? How much money should you take out of your business? And we're going to go ahead and walk you through the steps and the procedures that you need to understand so you can leave good enough money in your business without robbing your business or in bad cases, collapsing your business. If this is your first time here, this is Glendon Cameron, your corporate coach, your money coach, teaching you how to start a business so you can live a better life. And let's go into the first question. How much money does your business earn? Actually, let's not even start there. Let's start with you and your personal expenditures. This is reason number one that I recommend that you do not quit your job before you start your business. You start your business in addition to your job. Yes, you will be working more hours. Yes, you'll be working harder. Yes, your free time will be limited. But this is what we do in the corporate citizen world. Because if you do that for two to five years, the rest of your life can be magnificent. So this, once again, we're not quitting jobs. We're gonna start our business so the business cash can be reinvested back in the business. So I'm gonna give you some guidelines. Let's say your business makes $150,000 a year. What does your business need to keep running? So let's say you make $15,000 per month and your business is going to do, that's going to be like 185,000, you know, excuse my math. So you make $15,000 per month. Of that $15,000, what can you take and slide into your pocket? So we're going to talk about the methodology of how we get there. So the first thing you need to look at, let's say it costs you $2,500 per month to run your business and you have no employees. So that 2,500 comes off the top and this goes into your operating account. Then there's something called taxes. So whatever your tax rate's gonna be, you're gonna deduct that from the 15,000 and slide this into your tax account. So that's pretty much is going to, let's say your taxes are 22%, 22% of 15,000, it's gonna be roughly 3,000. So we're gonna take 2,500, slide that into the operating account. We're gonna take 3,000, slide that into the tax account, which is going to leave $10,000, about 9,500, all right? So what's going to be coming up in the future? So you're gonna take 10%, which would be 1,500, and slide this into a savings account. So that's gonna leave 8,000, and then you're gonna take another 10% and slide it into an investment account. So that's gonna be another 1,500. So that's gonna leave you roughly $6,500 that if you wanted to slide that in your pocket. But first of all, we must make sure that the business is good because essentially before you go paying yourself, you have to pay the business first. Uh, one of the big issues that happens with new entrepreneurs is they wanna take all of the money off the table. But first of all, it is very different when you move to a business mindset versus a civilian or employee mindset. So one of the big issues that you're gonna have is this understanding. So essentially, you're going to be able to pay yourself, depending, you know, using the $15,000 example, you would be able to pay yourself roughly $6,000 out of that 15,000, which means that 9,000 went back into the business and for taxes. So essentially you've got to ask yourself some questions. Now let's take another example. Let's say your business only made 5,000 and your business is one year old and you still have your job. You're not taking any of that money out of the business. Essentially what you want to do is work your business to the point where you can take money out the business and the business can still support itself. So at the $5,000 level, you know, and it's, it's gonna cost you 2,500 to keep the business running. Then you got potentially taxes. 
So that's 2,500 plus 1,500, that's 4,000. So there, there's really not a lot of money for you to take out the business because of the business expenses. So essentially the percentage rate should be probably once you're at a point where you're profitable. And that's another question because let's say your business does $5,000 a month in your business, it takes $4,500 a month to run. Your business isn't profitable enough for you to be pulling money out of it. So essentially, this is why uh, template businesses and everything are so popular because you could go out, get a box truck, get insurance, and start running Amazon Relay and start making money the first week. And that's good for a hustle, but if you're trying to really get to big boy money, and I'm gonna classify big boy money as $30,000 per month profit, profit per month, which would be an income of $360,000 a year on top of gross revenues. That's big boy money because at that level, you can live in New York, you can live in California, you can live anywhere you want to and live fine. So that's, cool. that, that's gonna be the beginning of big boy money and one of the things that I want to do is I have a goal here to help create 100,000 new black entrepreneurs. So we got a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. So if you know anyone that needs to hear this message, needs to hear real business advice, not bubble gum, not hustle, not this simple stuff, but want to build profitable and durable businesses, please forward them to this channel because that's all we're going to be talking about. Like this topic, how much money to take out your business? First of all, how old is your business? Second of all, is your business profitable and can you take money out of the business and the business still has money to operate? If the question is, if the answer is no, I cannot take money out of the business, you can't take no money out. And this is, let's talk about having a job. I started my first business when I had a job. So I was able to take all of that business income and let it stack up in the business checking account because I had a job for me to support myself. And this, this is one of the trickiest things you gotta navigate. Uh, Blavity, I forget the girl's name that started it, but you Google it, you can find her name. She's the founder of Blavity. Thank God her father bullied her into keeping the job while she started her business. Because in the interview, she said, thank God my father made me keep a job because that money came very useful in the development of Blavity. So this is your biggest problem as a new entrepreneur. Your biggest problem is gonna be cash flow and sales. And one of the things, unless you have a business like mine, like you know the online course business, the education business, has very high profit margins. Let's see, let will take my business. Let's say my business made $25,000 per month and my operating costs were a thousand bucks a month. I could easily take out $10,000 a month, still leave money to pay my taxes, to put into the allotted investments and savings accounts and still slide a lot of money in my pocket because the profitability of the business is so high. But if, what if you're in a business where your profit margin is 25%? So that means you make 100K and only 25,000 is profit. That's a whole different game. That's a whole different ball game because yes, on this side, you have mad, mad deductions. But on this other side, you have really slim profitability because literally I've heard of people, there's a guy here on YouTube, I can't, his name doesn't come to mind at the moment, but he said he's running 10 trucks, 10 trucks. And my profitability is higher than his profitability. And he has 10 trucks, 10 employees, and all kinds of stuff going on. So you have to look at your industry. You have to look at what you're doing. And this isn't to say that you should get into selling online courses because I'm about to have a conversation about that. Um, it is to say that you should know and gauge what business that you're in and know the profitability because recently I came across a study that was put out by Chase Bank about Chase Bank knows 
these industries. They know the profitability, they know how much money you should be making. And this is probably goes into their fraud alerts whenever someone's trying to do something a little funky with their banking. So they, they have built in guidelines to let them know what's are applicable and what's not applicable in terms of your industry. So all of this should be based upon your industry. Now let's talk about online courses. I personally feel that you should not create an online course unless you've been in that business a minimum of two years. Two years minimum, preferably five. My first uh, digital product came from a business that I was in 10 years. So I knew it forward and backwards and I was able to put my heart into that book and the book did really, really well. And what I teach right now, I teach how to sub corporations. I've had corporations for about 20 years. Uh, I teach, you know, the YouTube super creative. I've been a YouTuber for 12 years. So I don't teach anything. I don't know anything about And One of the things that you will see, some people will say, go out and learn how to do X, Y, and Z. I kind of disagree with that premise because if you go out and you study how to do something and you create a course around things that you study and you were not actively engaged in that business model, like I'll give you an example, like with creating LLCs and getting your EIN numbers, you used to be able to go off of your EIN of your primary holding company LLC. In 2019, the Internal Revenue Service changed the rules to that, so you can't do that anymore. It's little nuances like that, that if you're not a practitioner or you're not actually doing it, you're not going to know this. You're not going to know this stuff. So once again, it, it really varies upon your industry. And I'm about to give you some more parameters. Let's say, well, parameters or advice. I'll, let's say the first two years, you should not worry about paying yourself out of your business. First two years. Now this will give your business time to grow. This will give you time to stack up cash in your business accounts, and it will teach you the ebb and the flow of your business. So you start a business today, it's 2021. You should not be looking to take money out your business into 2023 or 2024. And this will give your business the cash it needs to grow and the scale. Now, I'm going to give you a, a hypothetical um, business model for someone with a job. Because once again, we keep our jobs. We do not just quit our jobs to go start a business it's because essentially this is going to create a vacuum of needs and desires and expenses that you cannot fulfill. So let's say you have a job and you make $80,000 a year and you want to start a service business and you've got a little extra, you got some spare change, you got a little change and you go out, you get your LLC, you get your holding company and you have the ability to hire people and send them on jobs. Now, this right here will put you in the manager role and essentially you can grow this company because you have a job where you're making 80K. So this will allow you to spend the two to three years growing the company getting it to a certain point before you start paying yourself. I have a friend who did exactly just this and he did it with a security agency. He had a job, he was making about 100K and he set up his security agency and what he would do is take his vacation time to run his business on days that he had to be in the office. And he secured a team of 10 security guards, he secured contracts, and when he was able to leave his job of six figures, his business was paying him 250. So he went from a six figure job to $250,000 annual income to a business that had been running three years. And that's how you do that. Like one of the things that I want people to urge people is to have caution and I want people to be patient and I want people to work hard. And this is why I'm giving you this information because we want to build 100,000 black businesses in the next 10 years and then literally change the landscape of black America. So if you want to be one of those 100,000 um, entrepreneurs, go below, get into the art of holding where I will teach you how to set up your corporate structure. Then I will teach you how to set up business credit and I will teach you how to set up and run your company virtually in the industry because 
whatever you're selling or whatever you're doing, you need customers. You need a product, you need service, and you need the infrastructure around that to support your business. So with that, links below, and I will see you guys in the next one.